Joining me now, House Judiciary and Foreign Affairs Committee member and Iraq War veteran, Congressman Guy Rushenthaler. Thank you so much, Congressman, for joining us. Thanks Happy for New Year to you. Happy New Year to you, too. What are the president's red lines in the Middle East, with Iran specifically? Well, I think the big takeaway is that if the president sets a red line, such as do not attack U.S. bases or joint U.S.-Iraqi bases, there will be consequences. When Obama made red lines, they were ignored. And part of the reason we're in this situation now is because under the Obama administration, Iran was able to grow its influence around the region. You got to remember, Iran is not only interfering in Iraq, they're also responsible for the unrest in Yemen. They fund Hezbollah in Lebanon, uh, Hamas in the Gaza Strip. So all over, in Syria, uh, we got to remember Syria. So they've created a lot of unrest in the region. And finally, we have a president and administration that's holding Iran accountable and putting on applied maximum pressure on that regime. Do you think, Congressman, that Iran sees the president as being weak with respect to some of his decisions, such as pulling troops out of Syria, such as canceling the attack uh, when their drone hit um, a certain part of the, uh, the Middle East? Do you think they see weakness or a reluctance to escalate a conflict in an election year particularly? No, I see just the opposite. Iran is acting out in part because this administration has been so tough on the on the sanctions. Mm. Right now in Iran, they do not have as much uh, money as they did under the Obama administration, so they can't fund a lot of their operations around the region. That's why you see them acting out, uh, blocking the Strait of Hormuz, sh shooting down drones, taking British oil tankers, for example. They're trying to artificially increase the cost of petroleum, which is going to mm. bring in more revenue. What's What's unfortunate for them is that we in the United States are not re re we're not reliant upon their oil reserves because we have natural gas here in the United States. We're now an energy producer. Also, they have a president that's going to stand by his word. And when one of our embassies is under siege, the cavalry is coming. This is not the Obama administration anymore. Right. The troops are headed in. All right. Let, let's move on and let's talk. Um, <laughs> about what's going on on Capitol Hill. Uh, looking ahead to 2020, what are the Republicans' priorities, specifically in the House, where you sit? Well, my number one priority is always going to be job growth and economic growth. The best thing that we can do in government is it has a strong economy because it fixes so many other problems that we have. But the way to do that is to make the tax cuts permanent. The tax cuts now expire in 2025. That might sound like a long way off, but if you're a business looking to invest and you're projecting out five, ten years, you need to make sure that you can have tax rates that are going to bring back a return on that investment. So making the tax cuts permanent will be my number one goal heading into 2020. Is the president speaking about the economy enough <clears throat> as he campaigns for 2020? He is, but the Democrats are trying to distract from this red-hot economy. Uh, you just went through the numbers. We have the S&P hitting um, all-time highs. We, we have an economy that's just roaring right now. Unemployment is at a five-year low. So what are, what are the Democrats trying to do? They're trying to talk about impeachment, bring that in the news, so we're distracted from just how strong this economy is and how much job growth we've had under the Trump administration. Congressman, good morning. This is Danny Hughes and Happy New Year. I'm wondering, how do you increase job growth, specifically in, in the areas that you represent um, with the economy doing so well? Is it a matter of um, bringing in additional companies to uh, employ these people? Is it to um, increase wage growth? What, what do you see mm -hmm. as, as the impetus? Right. There's really just two ways to do it. I, I believe it's that simple. One, we reduce regulation, which the Trump administration has done. That's helped in particular in the oil and gas industry, which is huge in my in my yeah. region, Western Pennsylvania. We also uh, grow the economy by reducing tax rates. Uh, and we've, d we've done that with the tax cuts. That's why we have to make it permanent. But when you have that stability, when you have low taxation, when you have low regulations, businesses can grow and flourish. I think that the best thing the government can do for business is just get out of the way and let business be business and grow the economy. Do you think the president wins Pennsylvania again? And I'm asking because you just mentioned you have a lot of oil and gas in your state and Democrats running all about climate change. They want to ban gas and oil in Pennsylvania. Uh, you also had Joe Biden just a few days ago telling a, a, a room of people, hey, you know what, coal miners learn how to code. 
How does that resonate where you are? When you have... When you have this field and Joe Biden, the supposed moderate, wants to ban fracking, um, that just shows you how far left this party has gone. But if they want to talk about banning fracking, reducing our oil and gas explore, exploration, good luck winning Pennsylvania. Because we know that it's just not about energy. It's about reducing the cost of energy so you can make manufacturing possible because you have reduced energy costs. Also, it's about petrochemicals. Oil and gas is about energy, but it's also about those petrochemicals that are used to produce everything from the jacket that you buy to the smartphone in your pocket. So if we have cheap and abundant petrochemicals, reduced cost of energy, then manufacturing can grow as well. And don't forget that because we, are, because we have natural gas production in places like Texas, Pennsylvania, the Dakotas, we're now able to export energy mm. and we're able to keep Russia at bay. We're able to put maximum of pressure on Iran like we're seeing, and we're exposing a lot flaws in petrochemical weapon. states like like Russia and Venezuela. Mm -hmm. So it's about jobs, it's about the economy, and it's about having a strong American presence abroad. We haven't spoken about impeachment yet, and as this Senate impeachment trial looms, the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, uh, telling reporters at Mar-a-Lago on Tuesday that he would be willing to testify. Watch. Would you testify in the trial? I would testify. I would... Um, do demonstrations, I'd give lectures, I'd give summations, or I do what I do best, I try the case. I'd love to try the case. All right, that's in contrast to former Vice President Joe Biden, who said he is, quote, not going to pretend that there is any legal basis to comply with GOP subpoenas. Congressman, your thoughts? Well, you know, good luck to Joe Biden if he thinks he's going to get away from not answering a congressional subpoena. Really, good, good luck with that. But the Senate has control of impeachment. It's not up to people like uh, Nancy Pelosi in the House or potential witnesses like Joe and Hunter Biden. It's up to Mitch McConnell what's going to uh, transpire in the Senate. And I think that if we were really going to explore this, we would call witnesses like Joe mm -hmm. Biden and Hunter Biden, see why he was getting paid $50,000 a month, not a year, $50,000 a month, when he had zero experience in Ukraine, zero experience in oil and gas. And uh, let's also call Adam Schiff and his staff and see what they were talking to with a whistleblower. And let's also call whistleblower. I tried to subpoena the whistleblower. I was denied. But let's bring all those folks out and get to the bottom of, it, bottom of this. Ten seconds, Congressman. Do you see any Republican defections in the Senate? No, not at all. In fact, I see Democrats voting with Republicans to acquit this president. And I see that I see our party growing stronger. And I see President Trump moving up in the polls in swing states. All right. Congressman Guy Ressenthaler, thanks for the time. Happy New Year.